It's 3.15, and that means it's time for... The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. That's right. Welcome once again to The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. I'm your host, Bill McNeil, and you're probably wondering exactly what is The Real Deal today. Hey, good question. I hope you're ready for some comic industry news. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of DC comic stuff. Jorge Jimenez, the wonderful artist behind James Tynan's Batman run, recently released some art basically with his new design for the Scarecrow character. And I'm going to say right now, it's haunting. <laughs> it's, it's actually quite scary. Very reminiscent of a, of a couple things. Going to go into that a little bit. Also, DC Comics announced they are going to be publishing some previously unpublished stories. That's a lot of this redundant use of that word from on my part. They're going to be releasing previously unpublished stories. They're, it's going to be do, done on digital. They only have information for the first three issues. Nothing of the caliber of Marv Wolfman's Man and Superman yet that I've seen. Also, you know, we haven't seen the stories yet. But it, it doesn't feel like they, they anticipate that the, the quality is going to be quite that high. Obviously, that was released as like a 100-page individual story. And finally, I do want to talk about Swamp Thing from Future State. I was very taken back by that story. Essentially, that is as good as Future State probably could be, and I want to talk a little bit about it. Although, like I mentioned yesterday, I am going to be talking to Joe Corallo here on the channel. Last week, we talked about, well, I guess it was this week, Daredevil and how Marvel always seems to get that character right. This week, we're going to be talking about DC never seems to mess up with uh, Swamp Thing, and absolutely in Future State, they did not mess up Swamp Thing. It was very good. I want to go into some of the reasons. I thought it was excellent. Just some of my thoughts because I enjoy the comic so much. Yes, I, I was furious and quite pissed off about Flash. I was underwhelmed by some of the other titles, but I thought Wonder Woman and Swamp Thing were actually very good, and I do want to talk about that one specifically. So before I get into the details, I do want to say, if you're here visiting, you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Give me a thumbs down if you think I suck. Either way, tell me your thoughts in the comments section. Let me know, did, did I get these uh, these uh, news stories wrong? Are you excited about the new Scarecrow? What, what stories, unpublished stories, would you like to, to hear about? Now let's get right into the stories. The big story is James Tynan went on social media this week and he debuted his new scarecrow and i must say this thing is horrifying to look at it's absolutely frightening what are you thinking james tynan and Oria menez producing a character looking like this he almost kind of looks like that that statue remember in batman 1989 vicky vale she's sitting there by that sitting standing there with that guy that's all um sniffing her butt and everything and he's talking about oh i think he's the king of the wicker people it kind of has that vibe to it but also it obviously has the gas mask i don't know why everyone thinks gas masks are so scary i was in the military for a long time i actually had to do a lot of exercises in gas masks i will say this they're not comfortable and it's it's not very fun to be in your your mop gear for more than maybe well it's never fun but after about 10 minutes you're ready to get out of there you're sweating your balls off and it's pretty claustrophobic. Obviously, he's also got these syringes for his beer toxin on his fingers. Apparently, that's a, a callback to a video game. Kind of reminds me of, was that Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Dream Warriors? Where he, he has the syringes full of heroin for his, his gloves and her nightmares. And her little veins are like sucking out for heroin. And he jabs her full of it and gives her an overdose. That was back when Nightmare on Elm Street was still scary. Although, you know, maybe not as scary at that point. But the first one was, was absolutely horrifying. Almost in the vein of this right here. What do you guys think about this costume design? I think that Jorge Jimenez is absolutely killing it on James Tynan's Batman. Now, while I'm not absolutely loving the story, in fact, I fell off. I might have to return for this because I like Scarecrow. In fact... I am about to do a video at the end of the week for my 10 favorite comic book characters. If it was like my 15 favorite comic book characters, Scarecrow would likely be on it because I think he's one of the best villains. Certainly probably my favorite DC villain, not DC, but Batman villain because he's so seldomly used in comparison to his peers. And I think the character is always uh, fresh. And even sometimes when they use Crane within the story, they don't even show him as the Scarecrow. And I, I like that aspect of him. I think this is a terrific design. And we knew that James Tynan was going to be uh, leaning on Scarecrow 
after Future State, obviously heading into Infinite Frontier. This is what he had to say uh, in December of last year. We're off to the races, and what I'm setting out to do is I hope I can tell one of the best Scarecrow stories ever. It's more than just a Scarecrow story. He's not the only key piece to it. We also have some of the threads that are set up in the Future State storylines, particularly with the Magistrate and Peacekeepers. Eh, that sucks. You'll see the origins of these. Those threads start in the Batman story in March. So all that's going to come together. It's going to be big, crazy story, and I could not be more excited about it. Obviously, we have seen Crane within Future State, specifically in the Harley Quinn story, which I thought was a pretty big letdown in comparison to the beginning. But we are not doing that video. We're here to talk about the Scarecrow and James Tyne and Batman run. I don't know. Jorge Menace's art is almost so good it's worth just jumping in there no matter how good the story is. I don't know. Is he one of the best Batman artists yet? He certainly hasn't had a, enough of a run to establish that. But I think he has all the makings for it. I think his manga-inspired art style really works for a character like Batman, much like Sean Gordon Murphy's manga-inspired art star, style really works for Batman White Knight. And I, I think he, he's been, really been the highlight I know a lot of people really enjoying enjoying James Tynan's run. I'm not enjoying the stories as much, but I cannot disagree if you think it's some of the best art that you've seen in quite some time. We are getting this new Scarecrow design, and it is absolutely frightening. It's horrifying, people, and I think James Tynan will be very happy with that, as I'm certain that's what he told Jorge Menes that he wanted, and it appears Jorge Menes absolutely delivered. Now... In 2019, my best comics uh, issue of the year was Man and Superman, War Marv Wolfman's unpublished Superman story. It was pretty much like a an origin story for Clark Kent moving Metropolis. I thought it was amazing. That story had been sitting in a drawer at DC Comics for like 20 years. <laughs> it was supposed to be part of the Superman Confidential uh, series, but it never got it got canceled before that story got actually published. They kind of set on it. And I, we've all been hoping maybe there's more to that. There's more gems sitting in the the drawers at DC Comics. And they are now pu publishing three stories that were previously unreleased as far as DC Comics. They are going to be DC Digital first. They're going to be under this Let Them Live uh, anthology kind of series. It is billed as the stories of DC's infinite universe. Obviously, that ties right into the... Uh, Infinite Frontier branding that's that's uh, got DC moving forward. And obviously, DC Infinite Universe is their digital platform. So it makes sense that they would do that. This is going to be led by Ambush Bug, kind of an obscure hero from DC uh, history. He will be kind of, um, you know, like the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt, uh, introducing the stories and all that stuff. We do have details on the first three issues. We don't know that there's going to be more than that. The very first issue due out on DC Infinite uh, universe, their digital platform, Let Them Live, number one, on February 2nd, features a Suicide Squad story from writer Jim Zub, artist Trad Moore. So if you like Suicide Squad, the very first issue is for you. It is an unpublished story from back in the day. Number two, which is coming out February 16th, so these are coming out bi-weekly, is a Nightwing story. Obviously, Nightwing is one of my fa favorite characters, and you will be seeing him on my top 10 characters list uh, on Friday. And this is going to be from Colin Kelly, Jackson Lanzig, Jorge Corona, Matt Lopes, and Carlos Mangual. Not sure about that. Obviously, they're not giving a whole lot of details other than kind of what it is. I might peek in on that one. I am an enormous Nightwing fan, and I wouldn't mind some good Nightwing. It's been a long time since we had a really good Nightwing story. And finally, on March 2nd, Let Them Live number three is a spotlight on Batman and a tale writer Scott Brian Wilson and artist John Paul Leone, Dave Stewart and Darren Bennett put, put together. Honestly, there is plenty of Batman to go around in DC Comics. They had something sitting away, sitting around that they needed to publish, and that will be the third issue. I certainly wouldn't mind them dusting off some old stories and continuing publishing them under this Let Them Live series. I think it's a great idea. Hey, there might be some gems just waiting to be discovered that are sitting in somebody's drawer at DC Comics. Finally, let's talk about Future State. Future State Swamp Thing is, I don't know, it's what Future State could have been. That is Ram V and Mike Perkins, obviously the writer and artist, taking the concept of Future State, no strings attached, and just going and telling a deeply moving, engrossing story. And I know you're going to say, but Wes, you said you, you like action stories. Well, I do like action stories. 
but I also do like very good character driven stories. And that is exactly what we got here from Future Shade Swamp Thing. The very first issue was was good. It was the best issue out of uh, Future State. It, it, was up, it was either that Catwoman or Aqua, Aquaman. It was one of those three. They're all also completely different. It depends on what you want. But I think Swamp Thing was probably the best ex executed. I think this had the makings of like an all-time classic Swamp Thing story. I think it's that good. Do I think it would have eclipsed Alan Moore's Saga the Swamp Thing? No. I don't think anyone will ever be able to eclipse that story on Swamp Thing because it was so original at the time, you're kind of all following in the footsteps of that. It's going to be hard to ever beat that because it was such an original take on the character. Nobody had really seen anything like that before. But this is definitely Ram V paying respects and tribute to, to all the things that happened in form. And the cool thing about this is we did get to see the demise of the Swamp Thing character. But it wasn't completely hopeless Kind of like what we're, we've seen in, in some of the other future state titles. Swamp Thing is no longer with us. That is the end of the story. But he did it for a, a very noble purpose. And it, he also breathed new life into the world while doing it. And I thought that was an amazing take. We also got some more great art from Mike Perkins. You know, he did more of the illustrations kind of showing you how Swamp Thing created his companions kind of in his own image. And another thing that we, we got in this was we got a great reveal on who the big bad ended up being, ended up being the Floronic Man. And I thought that was a really cool reveal. Obviously, that ties right back into Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. It was insane. He's, he's showing Swamp Thing, you know, I replaced all my body parts with plant parts and you still don't love me. You still reject me, you know, because I, I try to change myself into your image and I'm still not good enough. It was a very powerful, very emotional moment as he decides he's going to blight the sun and kill off all living things on Earth just to spite Swamp Thing because he didn't embrace him. It, uh, it was quite tragic for that character, but it was a fitting ending. And then the sacrifice that Swamp Thing makes when he essentially he sacrifices his companions and then you kind of realize what those companions were there for and what they meant to him. I can't imagine it being executed any better than what he did. And then, you know, he, he essentially transforms himself in an enormous tree, protects all the humanity and provides them food and substance to get through the, through the dark days until the sun comes back. There's a hope for a better tomorrow for humanity because of the, the sacrifice that Swamp Thing made. Now, is this Alec Holland Swamp Thing? I think it is, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. It, it could be this new Swamp Thing that Ram V is writing in Infinite Frontier, we know that there's going to be a new Swamp Thing. Now, does that pick up after this and it's like way off in the future? Maybe, I guess. We shall see. But if this is any indication of what Ram B is bringing to the table along with Mike Perkins on Swamp Thing, it's can't miss. Like, you need to read this story if you missed it. This needs to be collected. And it's a travesty that this was condensed down to 40 pages instead of 80 pages. Too bad that it was condensed because... I truly do believe if given the proper real estate that Ray and B and Mike Perkins would have made this story, Obsidian Dawn, I believe is the name, one of the best Swamp Thing stories of all times. Obviously, they have the chance to do that when, when they pick it up in Infant Frontier, but really blown away. This is what the promise of what Future State could have been. Then if you go read Flash that is the worst that it could have been. Most of everything else is kind of in the middle, but I don't see Catwoman or Aquaman as good as the first issues on those were coming close to eclipsing this and the satisfactory conclusion to this story and what Ram V did with the character. If it happens, I will absolutely uh, let you guys know, but I just, he set the bar so high and I imagine DC Comics knew that, but this was in a class above the rest so far. I was shocked that he was able to take what he did with the first issue, expand upon it, take it to another level, and actually conclude the story. The story is over. And he did it in essentially 40, 44 pages. Amazing job. Like I've, I've been saying for a long time, Ramby is one of the best up-and-coming writers. Is he just one of the best writers now? What do you guys think? So that is it, folks. That is the news for today. We've got a new... Horrific scarecrow design for Jorge Jimenez, 
that will be debuting, I believe, in Batman 106 and Infinite Frontier. James Tynan says that Scarecrow is going to play a big part in his Batman moving forward. And if this is what it looks like, I, I don't know. I might just have to come back just to see a Scarecrow. That's a character I really enjoy. And I think, um, whew, Jorge Menes, that's hot. DC are releasing previously unpublished stories in um, – let them live on DC Digital. It's going to be DC Digital first. Obviously, we do know that a lot of the DC Digital uh, series are being collected after two or three issues. I imagine those first three issues will be collected and in, in, uh, released as physical comics somewhere in the near future. Maybe we'll see that in the, the May solicitations. Who knows? Also, Future State Swamp Thing. My hat is off to Ram V and Mike Perkins. They set the bar very high. It's going to be so hard to eclipse that. It's damn near comic book perfection. I really hope you all read it. It was so good. So that's my DC Comics news for today. And I hope to see you all tomorrow when we talk about my 10 favorite comic book characters. Tonight, Perch is going to join me. We're going to talk about whether I take comic books too seriously. Do you take comic books too seriously? And also, I, I did leave a little space in there. So if there is any breaking news today, you should see that as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.